Hi everyone, it's Allison. Welcome back to The Tiny Herd, where we talk about everyday pet care for guinea pigs, rabbits, and other small pets. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you guys through our emergency medical kit for the guinea pigs and the rabbits. So my last video had to do with a GI stasis incident that I had with Mikey, and I wanted to show you guys what I keep on hand for situations like that. So first off, my disclaimer is this is not a replacement for a vet visit. This is just stuff that is meant to help you make your pet comfortable and healthy before you can get them to the vet and things to help support their condition once you get home from the vet. So not a replacement for taking them to the vet, but this is a lot of good stuff that you can use to support their condition or deal with some of the more minor things that can come up, which we'll talk about. So let's go ahead and just get right into this kit. Okay, so I wanted to start off by showing you where I actually keep my medical supplies. So I have these four drawers here. This one is for recovery food. This one is for grooming supplies. This one is for support tabs. And then this one is for our health kit. So all of our health and grooming and all of that kind of stuff, related stuff, is in this drawer set right here on this table for easy access. We keep our scale up here and it's just really easy to grab and I have all this table space to do health checks or anything like that. So wanted to show you guys first off where I keep everything and now I will go into the drawers and show you what we have. The first thing I want to mention, which is really important for you to have, is a kitchen scale. This is great for doing health checks with your piggies every week. This obviously won't work for bunnies because it's too small, but this is great for guinea pigs. It measures in grams, which is really important because that is the easiest way to, to tell weight changes for guinea pigs. So this is really important. So I have this scale. I just got it from Amazon. I'll link it down below, but it has a bowl that goes on it as well. And then you can just put a little pad in there to make it comfortable for the piggies. So this is something you definitely want to have to do health checks and it's really inexpensive. So definitely want that in your health kit. All right. So the first bin I want to go through is our recovery food bin. So this is the food and supplies that we use in an instance of GI stasis or if the pet is not eating to get them eating. This is great for, like I said, stasis, um, after surgery, any instance where they're not eating like they should be. So the first thing I have in there is the Sherwood Appetite Restore. This is banana flavored, so most of the pets really like it. It has electrolytes. It just has a lot of things that are really good to be giving your pet when they're not wanting to eat. So I use this for the guinea pigs and the rabbits. It's good for both and also chinchillas. So this is really great. It has instructions on how to use it, information about what's in it. So this is a really great product. I've used it a lot and it works, seems to work pretty well. Then I have several different kinds of recovery food. So first off, I have a big pack of the Sherwood Rabbit recovery food. And this is not the one with the weight gain. So this is just the regular one. I went ahead and got the big one because if, for example, a rabbit was having a really bad stasis episode or anything like that, rabbits eat quite a bit more than guinea pigs. So it's nice to have the big container just in case. So again, we fed Sherwood pellets for a long time. We don't feed them anymore, but I still really like their recovery food. So I went ahead and got this for the pets. Then I have the big one for the guinea pigs as well. This is also not the weight gain one. They do have a weight gain version as well, which I have used before a surgery, but I got the large version for the guinea pigs just because I have so many pigs. Like you never know what's gonna happen. So I have the big one for them as well. And you guys might be able to tell, um, both of these have been opened and used. So this is a great product to have. If you don't wanna get the Sherwood brand, there's also Oxbow Critical Care. Um, so there are definitely options out there for whatever type of recovery food you want to feed. There's also different flavors of critical care from Oxbow. I think there's an apple banana flavor as well as like a fine grind and the original. So that is a great option as well. And you usually can get that from your vet as well as on Amazon. So anything that I talk about that I can find a link for, I'll link it down below as well. Then the other thing I keep in here is just some samples. So I just have some samples of the adult rabbit food that we used to feed. And then I have a little sample of the adult guinea pig food that we used to feed as well. 
And then I also just keep some measuring, sp measuring spoons in here just to use for mixing up the critical care. If you have anything from this medical kit on hand, I would say have some sort of recovery food. It can be the, the difference between life and death if your pet stops eating or if they're sick. It's so important to keep their gut moving. So if you don't have critical care or recovery food on hand, I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself some. So that is everything I keep in our recovery food drawer and it just all fits in here really nicely. So that is drawer number one and we will get into the actual medical kit now. All right, next up we have our medical kit drawer. So I'm gonna go ahead and first talk about the things that also have to do with the recovery food because you can't just have recovery food and have no way to feed it. So I'm gonna cover that first and then get into the rest of these supplies and what they're for and why I have them. Okay, so the very first thing I wanna show you guys is this little baggie here that I have. So it has just some, you know, gauze pads in it, which I just have just in case there's like a cut or something. But the most important thing that is in this baggie is syringes. Like I said, most important thing that's in here are syringes. So this actually isn't even all of our syringes. We also have a bigger one that we use to feed critical care that's currently being washed because we just had the issue with Mikey. So I will link that video so you can see what syringe we used in that one. But I just have all these different syringes for different things. So we have these little ones for medication. These are very similar to the ones that our vet always gives us. I just have some that I keep in these little tubes that I got online. I have these these that come with the infant gas drops. I just picked these up honestly wherever there are syringes. You can get them at like Tractor Supply or Orschlin or like any type of feed store like that if you're in the United States. Um, so I just have all of these different types for any different situation. So we have all these on hand for anything we need to force feed, if we're force feeding crit critical care, giving medication, giving water, giving the appetite restore, recovery food, medication from our vet. The cap just kept him off of that. Um, so we just, I just keep them. Um, if they're not the really cheap disposable ones that we get from the vet when they give us medication, I keep them and wash them out. So I just like to have a variety on hand because you never know what you're gonna need a syringe for or what could happen. So you can see the syringe here has like a screw on top. And that is because it is this type of syringe that actually has a needle on it. And I wanted to address this because a couple people have asked me about things they've seen in the background of my video. We do not inject anything. I do not inject anything myself into my pets. So I have this here, which is ivermectin. I will link the video from the Los Angeles guinea pig rescue that talks about this and how to use it. But this is a great treatment for mites and preventative treatment for mites and lice and that sort of thing. Um, and the way that you purchase it um, or the way that I was able to purchase it is in a bottle that's meant to be syringe. So the way the top is, you have to use a needle syringe. So that is why we have needle syringes. I don't actually inject this. Um, you just take it off, I unscrew it. So you can see it just unscrews from the needle and then you have a regular syringe top. So then I just use it and you just put a drop behind their ear and that's how you treat for mites. So again, I will link that video if you wanna learn more about it, but that is the only reason we have those. Again, I don't inject anything. I don't know how to. If there's anything that needs injected, my vet does it. So just wanted to address that. And this is the Ivermax 1% uh, Ivermectin sterile solution for um, cattle. So that is what I have. Again, video will be linked if you wanna know more about that. Going back to the gauze, I just have these Band-Aid brand gauze pad, um, packs in here as well in case there's bleeding or we need to cover a wound or anything like that. Um, they really just are good to have on hand for cleaning anything or wrapping anything up. So I just threw some in here so I have easy access to them. Next up, I'm gonna talk about what I have um, that you can buy at the store that I will link down below if I can find it. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk about what medication I also keep, but it's not things you'll be able to get over the counter. It's just stuff that I keep whenever my vet gives it to me. So let's go over this stuff first. So I'm just gonna start grabbing stuff out of here. So first off, I have this thermometer. It's really cheap and easy to find, came from CVS. I still have the instructions for it so that I know 
how to use it, but I've never used this. Um, I honestly probably will ask my vet to show me how to use this before I ever do it because this is for the bunnies. Um, don't try to take your guinea pig's temperature using a thermometer. But this is for the bunnies. Um, I also have Vaseline not in here, but it should be in here, but we are using it for our dog right now. So I have this and Vaseline to go with it, but I've never used it. I just keep it on hand just in case anything drastic were to happen and I really did need to take a rabbit's temperature. So I have that. Um, then I have Benebac, which this is probiotics and I always give this whenever I'm giving antibiotics and that is just because antibiotics can cause a lot of issues with the digestive system and kill off the good bacteria that is in a guinea pig or rabbit's digestive tract. So giving this half an hour before or half an hour after giving antibiotics is a great way to make sure that all of the bacteria doesn't get killed off um, and keeps them going pretty well. So have this in here. You can see we have used this because like I said, anytime I give antibiotics, um, I use this. So I have that in there. Then I just have these two really big syringes. I don't use these. They don't really work that well. Um, to be honest, they're like really hard to push. Um, so I don't really use them, but I keep them in here just in case because you never know. Next up, I just have this pill cutter. I got this on Amazon, really easy to use. And I mostly just use it for cutting up like support tabs or if we have to give any pill medication, which I've never actually had to do. But I use it a lot for cutting up like support tabs or vitamin C, um, something like that. So I keep that in there. Then I just have this little pack of Q-tips I got from Target. It's just like a travel size Q-tip thing um, that I just leave in here for easy access and it just pops open from the top if I need any Q-tips. So next up, I have this saline solution for dogs. It is just saline. You don't have to get this brand. This has just happened to be the one that I got, but just get a all saline solution. This is good for washing out eyes if they get a hay poke or just get something in their eye. I use it if somebody gets a hay poke because we get those semi often and it works really well and it's good for flushing out the eye and kind of cleaning it off. So I have that in here as well. Then I have this povidone iodine solution. This is like an antiseptic solution used for cleaning out cuts or scrapes or any like exposed skin or irritated skin, anything that needs like sterile cleaning to avoid infection or anything like that. You do dilute this with water and it makes a solution that's good for cleaning things off. So I like to keep this in here. It's really cheap. I got this off Amazon. So this is a good thing to have on hand. Next up, I have vet wrap. Kind of goes along with the antiseptic solution. If there's a cut or anything like that, or if there's bumblefoot, any type of situation where you don't want the pet to have access to something to bother it, this works great because it doesn't need taped down. It like sticks to itself. So it's really easy to cut and it works pretty well. So I have this roll in here. It's also really cheap. So I just like to keep it just in case. I also have this little tiny pair of scissors that came in a set from Target that I just keep in here in case I need to cut vet wrap or anything like that. It's just good to have a quick access pair of scissors if you have a medical situation. All right, next up I have some vitamin C. So this is the Child Life Liquid Vitamin C. I don't give this to my pets on a regular basis, but I have it mostly for the guinea pigs in case anyone's not feeling good. I will add this into recovery food or syringe feed it just to give them a little extra vitamin C. It's so important for them to get enough vitamin C and if their immune system is kind of compromised or if they're sick, making sure they get enough when they're not eating is really important. So I like to have this on hand to give them a little extra just in case. I just want to make sure I'm like overkill on vitamin C when it comes to illnesses. So I like to have this to add into the vitamin C that's already in the recovery food. So I keep this as well. Next, I have this first aid antibiotic ointment, and this is basically Neosporin. I honestly don't recommend you guys putting this in your kit. I have it just in case, and if you use it, you really have to make sure that the pet does not have access to lick the area. So do not put it on the bottom of a foot and let your pet go groom themselves because this is very toxic. It's really only good for like if they had a major cut on their back, or if it was bumblefoot and you could wrap it up. I really just, 
I don't really know why I have this to be honest. I don't use it because I don't like to risk it. So that's not really something that I would even recommend you have because it can cause a lot of issues. Next up, we have teramycin, and you actually can get this over the counter. I bought this on Amazon. It's a little bit expensive, but I highly recommend you have it if your pets get eye pokes or hay pokes. This is used to um, put in their eye. It's an antibiotic eye ointment, essentially, and it works great for making sure they don't get an infection or have any major issues if they get a hay poke or have some kind of eye issue. So I have used this but after hay pokes many times and it works really well. It's used to only be available with a prescription, but they do now sell it over the counter. So I just buy it and keep it on hand because hay pokes can happen at any time. So this is a great thing to have as well. All right, this is another thing that if you have any of these things in your emergency kit, I would have recovery food and I would have this. These are infant gas relief drops and these have, these got Mikey out of his GI stasis. I've given them to guinea pigs to help them out. This is used to relieve gas and bloat and it can really help get the digestive system moving again. So I highly recommend having this. I buy it even if I didn't open the previous bottle, if it expires, I buy a new one because I just really, really think this is a really good thing to have on hand. So highly recommend you have this as well. And then these last two things are kind of situation specific. So this is Desitin. This is diaper rash cream. This works for guinea pigs that are pretty much senior pigs. So when Bell Pig was still alive, she was having a lot of issues with bladder stones and because she had arthritis in her back end, she couldn't really reach around to keep her belly clean. And combined with the bladder stone issues, she just was having a hard time keeping her belly clean and it was causing her to get some urine scald on her belly. So I would put this on her every day to keep her from getting that and to try kind of solve it when it did happen. So this is a really great over-the-counter easy fix for that. It does help a ton. It helped her a ton. Again, don't let your pet eat this. Make sure it's rubbed in and completely, you know, rubbed in and dry essentially before you put your pet back, but it does work really well. And then finally, this is Manuka Honey Cream. I only got this for Bell Pig to put on her bumble foot on her feet. We were using this in combination with the antiseptic solution and we were also using Neosporin and we were using this because I wanted to make sure that we were kind of taking care of that as much as possible. This was working really well to moisturize and heal. We were putting Neosporin on it, which we were putting this on it, um, which is the only reason that I have this because she, I wanted to make sure she wouldn't get an infection from that. So I wouldn't recommend really using this without having a specific situation because it can cause many issues. So we would put this on her feet and then I would not let her go back in her cage until her feet were completely dry and this was rubbed in. So that is why I have this because it's a good, it was kind of a good alternative to using Neosporin as well. So I got this specifically for that situation. All right, so these last few things are actual prescription medications we've got from our vet. So this is a full bottle of, well, it's not full anymore because we've used it, but this was a full bottle of Batril. This was originally given to us for Milky Way when she was having her issues to make sure that her eye didn't get infected. So I kept this and I'm glad I did because we've actually used it since then for June's respiratory infection. So it's really good to have this on hand because then I didn't have to rebuy it. This is Medicam. This was originally given to us for Milky Way as well, I believe. I had some from Milky Way and I had some from Bell um, for separate situations. So one of these is guinea pig dose and one of them is mouse dose. So I just kept the Medicam because it's just a pain medicine. It's like an NSAID. So it's a good thing to have on hand. And I actually did give Mike some of this when he had his stasis issues because being bloated and having stomach problems can cause pain. So I did look up the dose and figure out what he needed to have and gave him some of that as well. Medicam is a really safe pain medicine for both guinea pigs and rabbits as long as you have the dosing correct. So I had written down doses previously from using 
Medicam with the rabbits because I used to have a bottle of Medicam for Mike when he had his ear issues, so I knew what he needed. That's the only reason I gave it to him. Otherwise, you do have to get this from a vet and make sure you have the correct dosage. This is Neomycin, I believe, which is like a version of Teramycin. We got this from our vet. This was given to us for Milky Way's eye when she had her eye issue, which it turned out her eye issue was not something that could be cured with antibiotics, but we did try that in the beginning as well. So I just kept it in case we need it since it is pretty much like the Teramycin. All right guys, so thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and you found some new ideas on things you could keep in your pet emergency kit. Again, not a replacement for a vet, but some of this stuff is really great to have on hand in an emergency or just to give your pet some support before you can get them to the vet. So again, I will link a couple of videos from the Los Angeles guinea pig rescue down below to give some extra detail and insight on some of these products and how they can be used because that is where I got a lot of my ideas as well. So her videos are great and really informative and give some good detail on how and when these things can be used. So definitely check that out if you want some more information. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Let me know what you have in your kit and if you got any new ideas and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.